Uh, joining us now, Thomas Richardson from the IMF. Thomas, thank you for joining in. Uh, in your report, you have expressed some reservations over issuances of new banking licenses to corporate entities. What is the basis for these concerns? Sure. Well, I can just say that the uh, financial sector assessment that was published on our website last week is based on 2011 data and is, um, is a little bit out of date, but the basic uh, contours of our assessment uh, remain uh, in place, I think. Uh, a couple of broad points. One is that uh, we've noticed that the Indian financial system is becoming more complex, more interlinked uh, as time goes on, and, uh, and that relates to your question, of course. And the other uh, issue is that uh, the Indian financial system is a little bit unusual by international standards in that it's uh, kind of heavily dominated by the public sector, uh, both in banks and insurance and elsewhere. Your question about issuance of new banking licenses is something that I think the RBI has also picked up. Uh, the, the, uh, it relates to our first concern, which is that as the financial system becomes more complex, uh, more interlinked, uh, there is a requirement for the prudential regulatory regime to become equally uh, sophisticated. And that's, that's where we see some uh, steps undertaken by the RBI to enhance its ability to, to assess uh, the, the, the linkages between uh, corporates and financial sector entities. But it's still, you know, there's still some way to go, and we think that, that, that this is a, a challenge for all financial sector regulators around the world, and the RBI is not excluded from that. Thomas, the, the second point is, is about the independence of the Reserve Bank of India, of which you have raised some doubts. The Reserve Bank has responded to your report saying that the government does not interfere with its functioning. Do you believe that the RBI has enough independence? The, uh, the point made in the report is about the de jure or legal uh, independence of the RBI and the other uh, regulatory bodies in India. And really what, what is done in this report is something we do in all reports uh, like this. We conduct financial sector assessments for more or less all countries around the world. And we look at the legislation and, and uh, compare it with what we consider to be best international practice. Uh, on, that, uh, on those grounds, the uh, RBIs and the other uh, regulatory bodies in India, their in the level of statutory or legal independence is a bit less than we uh, might like normally to see. We don't have any real concerns about de facto or actual uh, independence in practice. It's more about the de jure, uh, written down legal uh, independence. You've also said, Thomas, that the multiple roles played by the Reserve Bank of India may be a problem. Uh, the central bank as a regulator, uh, as a supervisor, and as a debt market operator. What's the problem? Well, you know, the, I think the issue about possible conflicts of interest uh, arises uh, particularly with regard to the placement of public sector officials, uh, RBI officials for one, on the boards of uh, large public sector enterprises. And that, that is uh, an issue that we, it's not as if it, it's not as a, a situation where we see uh, practical problems uh, in, in practice, but we do see potential for conflict of interest. It's generally best practice to appoint members of the board of a financial institution who are independent and who are dedicated really to looking after their sole, their sole job, which is the uh, interest of the shareholders of the bank, uh, public sector or private sector. And that's why uh, there is some potential for conflict of interest, and that's why we made the point in the report. One final question, Thomas, and we're talking at a time when asset quality concerns and rising NPA levels of Indian banks are in the, in the spotlight. Do you believe if there is a systemic risk in the Indian banking system? Very good question. Actually, the, a key conclusion of the report, and I would encourage your, your readers or your watchers, your viewers to uh, take a look at it. It's on our website, imf.org slash India. A key conclusion is that we do not see a major systemic risk at this point. We believe that the financial system of India is uh, fundamentally sound and well-regulated. Um, that said, we have noticed, we noticed in 2011 and subsequently that the level of NPAs in the, in the banking system have grown, and it's, a, it's something that, to keep an eye on. It's a, it's a concern. We also noticed that the level of restructured loans uh, have increased, and, and that is also a level, uh, to some extent a concern because, uh, you know, in many countries, uh, restructured loans are actually included in the calculus of uh, non-performing assets. And so there, there are some concerns about both corporate sector vulnerabilities and financial sector vulnerabilities, and, and there, um, there are things that we think that the authorities need to uh, keep in mind. I would commend to your viewers the RBI's uh, semi-annual um, financial um, 
Stability Report, which goes into these issues in great detail and I think is, is quite good. It's really one of the areas where we think the uh, RBI is doing a, a kind of a first best uh, uh, international practice uh, job of, of keeping an eye on the macro prudential risks that the system faces. Thomas, we leave it there. Thank you for your time. That was Thomas Richardson from uh, the IMF.